the prodigal sons finally returned home. Daniel Ricardo's made the Red Bull return after he left a shocking 2018 move. The eight-time race winner is one of the biggest names in Formula One, so most of us expected him to be returning for a race seat, but that's not the case. So why did Ricardo opt for a third driver and an off-track role at Red Bull instead of a race seat elsewhere? Stay tuned as we dig deeper into today's topic. To begin, let's look at Ricardo's Red Bull move and what offers he had from other teams. Daniel Ricardo has officially joined Red Bull as their third driver in 2023. The smile says it all. I'm truly excited to be coming back to Oracle Red Bull Racing as their third driver in 2023, Ricardo said during the official announcement. For me personally, the ability to contribute, to be surrounded by the best team in F1 is hugely appealing, while also giving me some time to recharge and refocus, he added. Red Bull CEO Christian Horner, on the other hand, said, It's great to bring back Daniel into the Red Bull family. He has enormous talent and such a brilliant character. I know the whole factory is excited to be welcoming him home. In his role as a test and as a third driver, Daniel will give us the chance to diversify, assisting in the development of the car and aiding the team with his experience and knowledge of what it takes to succeed in F1. The move comes after he agreed to a one-year early termination of his three-year McLaren contract to make room for the F2 champion Oscar Piastri. The move has been taken many by surprise due to the availability of race seats that Ricardo would have gotten if he actually just wanted to. They would have just been his. He was open to an Alpine return in 2023, but it wasn't successful. And he wasn't interested in racing with Haas or Williams. Haas's boss said that the team reached out to Ricardo before his McLaren exit, but Ricardo never even spoke with him, never returned a call. Mercedes was considering signing him as their reserve driver prior to his Red Bull discussions, but Toto Wolff understood why the Honey Badger wanted to go home to the team where he won seven of his eight races. We can surely conclude that Daniel chose Red Bull over the other teams due to his familiarity with them. Are we thinking along the same lines? Now that we take a look at his seasons at McLaren and the fallout that led to an early contract termination. In 2021, Daniel Ricciardo joined McLaren in a move seen as having the ability to produce championships. Who would have predicted that it would end with just one win and a contract termination? However, wasn't that expected given his recent performance? There were certainly some races where I felt more comfortable, Daniel once said. The difficulty, the struggle, what was encouraging me, and then all of a sudden, a week later, we were back where we were. The inconsistency, the unknown, that's what made it so tricky. But I'm happy to have had a few nice races since the summer break. In the just-concluded season, his teammate Lando Norris seemed to have been given first priority. Norris got the most recent upgrade package at the Singapore Grand Prix, which included a new floor and side pods, whereas Daniel had to wait until the unfollowing weekend in Japan for his delivery. However, Daniel understood that the team wouldn't be able to prepare enough parts to equip both cars over the weekend, which is likely why Norris was considered first. He even tried to make the best of the situation, saying that there might be some benefit in having an unchanged car rather than just adapting to the new parts. We all know that Daniel would have preferred the upgrade at the same time that Norris did, but he didn't have a choice. In an interview with Sky F1, Daniel said, But it was just obviously a run that was not really happening and coming together. I, I didn't want to walk away from this, but the team made the decision, and we talked about it, and I also thought that it was best to accept this and maybe move on. I'm a fighter, but sometimes I gotta let it be. What do you think about Daniel's stay at McLaren? Let us know in the comment section below. Following that is the real reason that Ricardo settled for a Red Bull return instead of an F1 race seat. Might sound weird, but Ricardo just doesn't want to race in 2023. Due to his desire for a year off from racing, his views as a third driver position at Red Bull, it's, it's, it's preferable to a race seat elsewhere. Why is that the case, though? You're probably wondering. Due to his harrowing McLaren experience, Daniel was weary of the seamless, endless struggles. After the summer break, it was obvious to him that a break would be the best for him. So then it was, okay, what's the next best thing? And the more that I thought about it, to obviously be involved to some degree with a top team, that was obviously the preference. Ricardo told Motorsport.com, With the 2023 season having 24 races, it'll be the biggest F1 calendar ever making it more demanding for the drivers, and considering Ricardo is just coming off of two very difficult seasons, he was definitely 
at risk of not being the best version of himself if he took a race seat elsewhere. Ricardo said that it, it's easy to get caught up in a competition since F1 drivers devote so much time to it, and when it isn't going well, they can get very frustrated very easily. Ricardo stated that during his Red Bull unveiling, he will not participate in every race, and that he'll take some time off. So what's going to happen if he decides not to return to racing in the middle of 2023? In response to that question, when asked, Ricardo said, Honestly, I think that's also in a way the beauty of this. It'll either fuel the fire and make me hungry and more motivated than ever, or it'll actually be like, Oh, this is the right thing for you. And in that case, I must be really happy. Because as much as you go through highs and lows of racing, I'm still very happy with life. And I'm privileged to live a good one. So, if next year I'm not interested in coming back, then I must be doing some really cool shit. So, what was the 2023 season? Was that our last season to see the Honey Badger racing? Moving on, we focus on Ricardo's new Red Bull role and what it entails. Daniel Ricardo was now officially Red Bull's third driver for the 2023 season, thanks to a contract described as very specific by Christian Horner. Additionally, Ricardo will engage in commercial endeavors, simulator work, and showcase car runs. So the Honey Badger is ready to drive, should the team really need to use him. Red Bull's Helmut Marko told Sky Germany that Red Bull has so many sponsors, which requires them to do many show runs since Ricardo is a high-profile F1 figure. Yeah, he's best suited for the third driver role. During the announcement, Ricardo said, I can't wait to be with the team and provide support with simulator work, testing sessions, and commercial activities. He also made it clear that he will not attend all 24 races next year. As a test and third driver, Ricardo will aid the development of the car, according to Horner, providing the team with his expertise and understanding of what it takes to succeed in Formula One. Now Red Bull has a well-known driver to support their efforts in several significant markets, and Ricardo has more time to devote to himself. He'll be well paid for a less demanding role compared to that of a full-on reserve driver, and he's going to have this chance to do some fun activities while he gets to stay close to the grid. The Honey Badger is undoubtedly an asset to Red Bull. Finally, is Ricardo Sergio Perez's replacement? Does Ricardo have the chance to compete for Red Bull in the near future now that he's joined the team? Red Bull is currently under contract with Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez until the end of 2028 and 2024, respectively. This shows that there is no opportunity for Ricardo to have a racing seat until 2025, unless either one of the two drivers leaves by choice or is forced to. In response to our inquiry, Horner stated that Ricardo's contract didn't include a provision for his return to Red Bull as a full-time driver in the near future. He expressed his confidence in the Verstappen-Perez combination, which helped them win the Constructors' title. The two drivers, they do have a good relationship, they've raced well for the team, and they have no reason to see that being any different tomorrow or the duration of their contractual commitment to the team thereafter, said Horner. Red Bull might not have intended to consider Ricardo as a Perez substitute when they first began talking with him about the move. However, as a result of internal tensions caused by Perez's alleged intentional crash during Monaco's Grand Prix qualifying, things have changed. Max refused to allow Perez to pass in Brazil as retaliation for that qualifying crash. Despite Max's assertion that the conflicts have been resolved, there were rumors in the F1 world of intense tensions within the team between Brazil and Abu Dhabi. Damon Hill, the 1996 world champion, claims that Verstappen has a lot of influence in the team and he could force a change between Perez and Ricardo mid-season in 2023 if the conflict persists. Red Bull won't hesitate to do this since they have Ricardo as a backup driver. Is Ricardo's return a sign that Sergio Perez is under pressure? Is it a weapon to keep Perez in line and show him his second driver position in the team? Let us know in the comment section below and also under pressure. Doom, 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 da, da, doom. No, no, all right. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Anyways, hope you guys liked it, and be sure to return for more amazing content on our channel. Just like the Honey Badger did, hit the subscribe button. Because, yeah, Ricardo subscribed to this YouTube channel. Don't fact check it, just believe it. Internet, baby! Till next time, cheers.